Welcome to part 4 of my CNC build. Uh, today I want to show you guys the electrical side of my machine. Uh, it's been a lot of work and uh, frankly I think some of you may probably think this is way overkill and it maybe it is. Um, first off I just want to say that I am and not a certified professional, so if you want to do something like this yourself, you read up on things. Don't take my word for it, okay? Because rules may differ in the country you're in for the electrical side, for instance. With that disclaimer out of the way, I just want to show you the layout of my electrical cabinet. And I also want to show you some of the safety features that I have implemented in the machine to keep me and the machine safe um, while running programs. But first off, let's have a look at the electrical cabinet and the layout in there. Uh, this, we start at the top left. These are my server drives. Uh, I've left space here for a fifth uh, drive in case I want to get a fourth access at some point. Uh, this is my VFD, uh, 24 volt AC DC converter, and a 5 volt converter. Uh, this is my main uh, contactor. Uh, some MCBs for uh, the uh, machine. This is a, a terminal for all of the AC uh, going uh, throughout the machine to various parts. Uh, this is for the uh, 24 volt DC, it's an MCB for the DC. Some fuses for the DC. These are, sorry, these are relays for the output from the MISA cards, so that I can have um, different um, uh, voltages and currents and whatever uh, being switched. Uh, my encoder input uh, MISA card, it's a 7i89 uh, card. And behind it is a 7i76 card, which run the main portion of the machine. Um, these are relays for various uh, safety functions, mainly in the machine. And then there are a lot of these terminals that act as connection point for a lot of different wires. They continue here. Uh, these wires here are um, temporary wires so that I can get the machine moving without these functions being actually connected to the uh, machine. And then there are some more terminals and a AC output terminal as well. Uh, I just quickly want to mention about these, the specifics of these terminals. They, I am used to working with these types of terminals through my my pro professional work, um, so that's why I've chosen them here. You wouldn't normally see these kinds of terminals in a CNC machine, perhaps, but the good thing about this is that you can open them like this. Now the upside and the downside is not connected through the terminal anymore. And this is great if you want to troubleshoot. You can open this and all of a sudden you may get a different state or something. There is also special connectors that you can push into these um, uh, screw holes that connect so you can use um, um, jumpers from one uh, terminal to another for instance if you want to make a, a temporary um, connection to something like I said it's 
pretty very overkill i think for a machine like this but i i'm used to working with them so i wanted to have them in, in the machine so moving on i want to talk about the um, the safety uh, functions of the machine uh, so I'm switching over to a presentation to, uh, to be able to show you better what I uh, am thinking and how I've done things. I just quickly want to mention a couple of things about e-stop circuits. Um, the general idea about an e-stop circuit is uh, safety, right? You want to protect the um, operator and also, you may want to protect the machine uh, when the button is pressed. Usually what you do is you ensure that there is no machine movement when the e-stop button is pressed. Um, on a CNC machine, that may uh, be achieved by cutting power to the, um, the spindle and the servers or steppers, perhaps. Um, but one thing I've seen that some DIY machines um, miss is um, ensuring that the machine does not start moving again when the power comes back on. Um, and th this, depending on what you do or how you influence the e-stop circuit, this is more or less important. If you push the e-stop button because something is wrong, you, you, you push the button and, and the machine stops. Uh, then you know what happened. You know why the machine stopped moving because you pushed the button. However, if there is power outage in your shop, uh, either a power outage or maybe a fuse has blown or something, and the machine stopped moving, now you may or may not be entirely sure why the machine stopped moving. And if you then proceed to, to look for the, the problem, um, you may find yourself in a position where you have your hand um, in the way of the machine and the power comes back on and then suddenly the machine starts moving. Um, or any number of other scenarios you can th think for yourself. Um, it is quite important to design the e-stop circuit in a way that it is uh, self-resetting. So that if uh, the, the button is pressed or if the uh, circuit no longer has power, it cannot come back on on its own. And you can do that in a number of different ways. Uh, but one of the ways you can do it is using a circuit that looks kind of like this. This is a um, fairly normal um, e-stop circuit. Uh, you have a input of some sort. In this case, it's a three-phase input uh, for my machine but you may have one face and it still works. You just use the bottom portion, L3 and everything below. You have a main contactor that has a, um, a jumper connected between the output of one of the contacts and the uh, input of the, uh, on the coil side, between the start button and the input on the coil side. You then have a start button to energize the coil and the first time. This is a, um, a self resetting button, a, a spring loaded button. So when you release it, it, it uh, opens again. You have a stop button that is wired in a normally closed fashion. It is also self, self resetting, it's spring loaded. You may or may not want to be able to see uh, if the um, power is on to the machine. So you can connect a lamp or an LED of some sort in, in here. And you have the e-stop mushroom uh, style uh, button in series or multiple if you want to. Uh, you wire them normally closed in this case. Um, 
And then you get your outputs over here. Provided you push the start button, it will latch the power and then the main contactor will be uh, uh, connecting the, uh, the input to the machine side. Until you push stop or e-stop or until you push, uh, or sorry, until uh, you have a power outage, which is important, like I said before. So if you lose input, then this is resetting because of the start button being uh, spring loaded. It won't re-energize the contactor coil, which means that the machine won't have any power even if the input comes back on. So this is fairly straightforward. Uh, in my machine, I decided to add a couple of things to the uh, circuit. So mine looks something like this. Um, I have several MCBs, uh, mechanical fuses, uh, that I have tied into the loop like this. These MCBs that I have, they have a secondary contact that mimic the state of the MCB itself. Uh, and I've tied those secondary contacts into the uh, e-stop circuit. And the reason I've done this is because I want to ensure that if any of these MCBs trip, the power on in the whole machine is going away. Uh, and this is important in my case because uh, I have the VFD on one MCB and then I have the server drives on another, for instance. So I may find myself in a position where the VFD uh, MCB has tripped, let's say during running a program, so the spindle stops. And if I didn't have this circuit, then the machine would continue moving as if the spindle was on uh, because everything else has power. So I just, that, that's why I did it like this. I wanted to be sure that um, nothing could run without everything being powered. I have a series of uh, status checks or inputs uh, for the machine that is taking into the uh, controller to make sure that everything is okay before I am able to run the machine. Um, it requires the main contactor to be on. Uh, in my case, the, um, the Mesa card and the PC itself is actually has power as long as the um, the inputs of the machine have power, but the contactor um, may be off. So I need it to be on to be able to run the machine. That's a requirement. The servo drives have alarm outputs or contacts that can display or change state if there is a problem with one of the drives. So I've run a, a, a cable in series through those to make sure I pick up that contact on each drive. Um, I need all of them to be okay. Same for the VFD, it also has an output contact. I need it to be in an okay state. Uh, I have a, a spindle cooling unit that uh, also has a status contact. Uh, it needs to be okay. On the tool setter I'm currently using, there is a uh, over travel switch. So if you blow through the actual uh, first um, connector or the, f the first switch where you actually check your tools, uh, it is triggered and it is wired into this status check. And if you blow through it and, and push the second switch, then uh, the machine stops. There is a uh, air pressure uh, sensor that is set to seven bar. So if the air pressure is below seven bar, the machine stops or I can't start it. 
And I also tied in the uh, watchdog function on the Mesa card. Basically, it's an output that uh, is um, connected when you start the machine. This may have been uh, unnecessarily in hindsight, but it's wired. So all this um, together pro produces a machine is okay uh, signal into the uh, controller. And this in turn is used uh, to um, uh, to stop the machine from starting or to stop the machine if it's already running and, all, and, and some of these states change. There is another um, status check I'm doing and it's related to the spindle. The spindle start status check looks like this. There are sensors inside my spindle that tell me if the tool holder is in a eject position. I require it to not be in an eject position. Um, there is another signal that tells you if the tool holder is clamped correctly. I require it to be clamped correctly. Um, I also have a uh, switch on the cabinet door, the enclosure door, that is required to be closed. And I also require through uh, loads of sensors and, and uh, inputs that the tool magazine is retracted and closed because it comes into the um, working area of the spindle. Uh, I need it to be retracted and closed and put away before the spindle can start. Um, all of this together comes to a spindle start is approved signal. This is connected in two ways. Uh, one of the ways is that this physically breaks up the, um, uh, the spindle enable output from the controller so that if these things aren't in an okay state, you cannot start the spindle. It is as particularly important with the tool holder um, uh, signals, because if it's not clamped correctly, you may throw the tool holder all over your shop or into something fleshy, which would be bad. Um, the other way it is integrated is that it's put into the controller and if this signal is not um, is not okay then uh, the controller will stop the program uh, so that it doesn't continue running the program with the spindle off so if you made it this far through the video i want to thank you for the interest you're showing in my machine build i hope I have given you some ideas for your own machine and um, if you have any questions or comments post them below I read them all and um, I'll hope I will see you in the next video until then take care